This is episode 402 of the Amy Ayler Show. And today we're going to be talking about homeschooling a kindergartner and I have a very special guest on today's show. But before we go into that, I just want to remind you that the Amy Ayler Show is especially for powerful women that are sick and tired of being so darn hard on themselves. They are ready to end that never enough cycle so they can rise into the leaders we need and we can believe in. Today's show notes can be found at amyaylorshow.com forward slash 402. That's amyaylorshow.com forward slash 402. Now, on today's episode, I have a very, very special guest. She's a little bit wiggly next to me. I'm so excited. It's her first time on my show. I have my six-year-old kindergartner, the amazing Evie Rose. Do you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. (laughs) All right, Evie. So I wanted to bring you on to today's show because I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what this transition has been like from going to normal kindergarten, where you would have recess and play with your friends and play on the jungle gym and get to do all sorts of fun stuff to now being at home all the time with your mommy and daddy and big sister. How do you feel about that? A little sad and a little happy. Oh, okay. What a great answer. So what are you a little sad about? Mm, I'm sad that I don't go to school and see my friends. Yeah. What else are you sad about? Um... I'm about seeing my teachers and having recess on the playground. Yeah, that was so fun. What was your favorite part of the playground at school? Um, the big slide. The big slide. They have this incredible big slide. I'm just letting everyone that's listening know that you have an amazing big slide at your school. So now you also said that having school at home also made you happy. And I'm curious, how does it make you happy? Well, because I'm spending time with my family a lot. You get to spend a lot of time with your family. What's your favorite part about that? Well, we're spending time with my mom, which is right here. (laughs) I love spending time with you, too. It's been really fun to get extra time together, huh? Yeah. What? How has it been for you to be doing some of these classes on Zoom and doing, like, all of these calls? How do you like that? Not really much because I miss being together and doing it. I know. Well, today it really struck me because you were doing a game of freeze dance over Zoom um, with one of your one a cool teacher that you have at your school. A library teacher. A library teacher. She read a book, and then you you all did um, a freeze dance. And how was that for you? It was happy fun day. It was a happy fun day. Yeah, that's awesome. What's the hardest part about um, being on the screen so much for school? It hurts my head. It hurts your head sometimes? Mm-hmm. Oh, I'm sad to hear that. I'm sorry that it hurts your head, baby. Mm, that's no fun. And what's um, what are the classes that you're liking on like Seesaw and on the different things? What are you liking? I like Lexia. You like Lexia. What do you like about Lexia? Tell us about that. It's because that um, whenever you finish all the things, then you go into the next level. And I'm on level five now, and I only have to do the sight words to get that, to all the way get to level six. So you like moving up those levels? Uh-huh. It's I- kind of a celebration, huh? Because, like, I always do it so quickly. Like, on level one, I I liked it the most for, for some reason. Mm. Well, let me ask you this other question, because I know that there's some other people that are moms, that are dads, that are aunties or grandparents, or people that are caregivers, which I know it's caregivers week at school right now, right? Mm-hmm. So other caregivers that are homeschooling their kids. And I was wondering, what are some tips that you can give people that are homeschooling their kids? How can we do the best job possible to homeschool you in a good way? Mm -hmm. Well, by, like, letting me, like, sleep a little, and then I can wake up and go on my device, and then when my mom says, or my dad, um, they either say, it's time to go to school, or I'll be like, okay, another day of school, and they'll be like, 
Oh, yay. I get to do <laughs> Lexi again. <laughs> so it sounds like you really like to, first of all, get to sleep in until whenever your body wants mm-hmm. to wake up. You don't have to, where sometimes when we were in school, we'd have to wake you up, huh? Mm-hmm. And now you just sleep in until you want to, and then you come downstairs, oftentimes by yourself, and then you use your device, your Kindle. I got an iPad for Christmas. Yeah, yeah, it's a Kindle iPad, yeah. And I thought I was never going to get it for some <laughs> reason, because Bella was like, you're never going to get that, and I'm like, why? Santa gives us everything, and then, ta-da, it gave me it. <laughs> And so you like being able to have some free time to do whatever you want uh-huh. on your device before you go into school. So that's important. My favorite game is Piggy. Piggy is your favorite game. Yeah, I know. You love that game. What do you love about it? Um, it's because that you always get to watch people play the game if you, like, get something or yeah. something. It's like... Fun. It's fun. And also a little scary sound like a a little scary too. There's like jump scares, right? They're like jump scares. Yeah, jump scares. Yeah, it's like goosebumps. It's like, like. Fu- it's like fun scares, not uh-huh. like scary scary. Okay, got it. <sighs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, so then like what happens if a mommy or a daddy or grandparent or auntie or uncle that's taking care of a kid, if they start to get frustrated because the kid is not listening when they're supposed to be doing homeschool, what would you suggest that we do? How could we help? What can we do? Uh, I don't usually do that. You don't usually do that. That's true. I was thinking maybe you could teach everybody like some of your breathing techniques that you do at school. Like what's one of your favorite things that you do at school, like your mindfulness stuff that you do at school that helps um, your body calm down? Starfish breathing. How do you do starfish breathing? Well, uh, you like put your, one of your hands out and then like you would like breathe in and then you put, put the other finger of it. Of the other hand, yeah. And then you go, go all the way down, and then whoo, go all the way down. Yeah. Just like that. Yeah, so you put your hand out, and then you trace your hand, and when you're going up to the tip top of the finger, you breathe in, and then when you go slide down, you breathe out. And then when you go up to the tip top of the finger, you breathe in, and then when you go down to the other finger, until you get to the very pinky, you get to switch the hand. And then you switch the hand, and so you take, I guess that means you take how many breaths? Ten, ten deep breaths, and that helps calm your body down. Yeah, because sometimes I get really riled up, and then I'll be like, yeah, 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 and then I'll be like, mm, like silly. <laughs> silly, yeah. Or maybe angry. Sometimes we get angry, huh? Mm-hmm. It's good to just feel all your feelings, I guess, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah. Feels like about. there's like an ice in my tooth. There is. Well, you just had an Asahi bowl, so it might be that. Okay, well, we're going to wrap up this interview, but is there anything else you would like, especially the moms and the aunties and the caregivers that are listening, is there any message you would like to make sure to give them? Mm-hmm. Stay safe if you could, but be maybe you can put up a rainbow on your window if you want to. Uh and it would show people how you make, how you hope that people who get the virus um, don't die from it, and yeah. instead get get it away all the way across the whole city, all the way back into this little place where the bad germs live. Oh. Um, maybe it can happen yeah. of all the people not getting sick, but some people got sick from it and then died. But that's not mostly people who, mostly people um, do not die from it. That's true. Right Most now. people don't. That's true. Um, yeah. I like that, putting a rainbow up in your window to remind people to have hope. Huh? We already had we, it. We did, a, we did a rainbow, didn't we? Yeah. So can I ask you the very last question, which I ask everybody that's a guest on my show? Mm-hmm. What's messy and what's magical about your life right now? What does messy mean? Yeah. What is, well, you know what messy means. Like, what's messy about your life right now? What's oh. messy? Oh. What's messy about my life is 
trying to like do a lot of work instead of like not going to school it's harder for me to listen because it's only on our computer and it's really low thing when you get to 100 it's still low but you have to get I have to get a speaker, sir. Oh, yeah, it's seven. hard to hear the computer sometimes yeah. that you're working on. Wait. So it's, yeah, that is messy, huh? Mm-hmm. What's magical about your life right now? Mm, magical is um, that we're all staying safe and that we don't get the virus. That is magical. Evie, thank you so much, sweetheart, for being on my show. <laughs> Evie would love for you to share this show with lots of people because she's very excited for lots of people to hear this. And so it's Amy Ehler signing off, reminding you to keep embracing the messiness and the magic of your life until our next episode where I'm bringing my dear friend, Mike Robbins, to talk about his latest book. We're all in this together. You're going to love our next episode as well. All the best. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.